the Advanced Tech Podcast, providing a spotlight for innovators and disruptors. For links and show notes, and to find out how to sponsor the Advanced Tech Podcast, go to advancedtechmedia.org. You can also find and sponsor us on Patreon. If you're listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, please take a moment to subscribe and give us a rating. You can also sponsor us using Bitcoin at advancedtechmedia.org. Sponsor. Welcome to the Advanced Tech Podcast. Joining me today are three very special guests. We've got the chief meme lords uh, who were recently hired at Strike. So Yellow, Greg Zaj, and RD. Welcome. Hey. It's good Thank to be you. here. Thank you very much. Of course. So before we get into Strike, let's talk a little bit about your backgrounds. And Yellow, let's start with you. How did you get into Bitcoin and uh, how did you get, I guess, involved with Strike as well? So uh, in Bitcoin, I I first uh, read about it back in 2012, I think. It took me a year to buy in. I found the Bitcoin due to basically, I'm a product of my environment, basically due to the austerity here in Greece. I started uh, researching why this shit show here was uh, happening, basically. <laughs> so that led me to Bitcoin in a forum I was reading about. Yeah, I opened my first account. I bought and uh, from then um, I started uh, buying with whatever I had in the end of the month, little by little. Yeah, that's basically my my, my origin story. <laughs> nice. Greg, how about yourself? How did you get involved in Bitcoin? Uh, I recently was going back through my uh, first transaction histories on an old uh, Coinbase account, which I no longer use because Coinbase sucks. Um, but... <laughs> In 2015, I made my first purchase, and I guess that was my first entry into Bitcoin. Uh, I bought $5 worth at something like $230. Or... Since then, I, I continued to, uh, to use the site to make uh, online illig- illicit purchases with my Bitcoin. Um, and I think I collected somewhere around like 13, 14 Bitcoin, and uh, all of which I sold <laughs> very early on for very little money. And it's... Uh, it's a shame. So I, I did the, the traditional trajectory that a lot of Bitcoiners do. So I, uh, I I got in early, did my shit coining. I was a I was an ETH head for a while, and eventually through uh, through Austrian economics, uh, Rothbard and Mises, and reading Robert Breedlove and following American Hoddle on Twitter, I uh, came around to uh, becoming a Bitcoin maximalist. It's just the uh, best way forward with Bitcoin. The rest of my rabbit hole story is, is on multiple other podcasts that people can check it out. <laughs> awesome. And then, RD, how about yourself? How did you get into Bitcoin? What's your, your Bitcoin origin story? I, um, I don't know exactly when I first heard about Bitcoin, but I've been watching Max and Stacy. I've been watching the Kaiser Report for years and years and years. So I don't know. I must have heard it a hundred times on there. But, you know, just it interested me, but I sort of put it off kept putting it off and then eventually i finally purchased a audio book by dominic frisbee called um bitcoin the future of money and i'd primed myself for bitcoin because i've been reading a lot of books about economics and had just loads of questions loads of question marks about how the economy worked and what was going on with all the debt and everything. And I just, anyway, finally got round to the, it was an audio book, listened to the first chapter in my car, got out the car and I was like, this is it. This is the answer. This is like, like this makes sense. So I literally got out my car after listening to the first chapter of that book and then went and bought my first like 50 quid's worth of Bitcoin and then haven't looked back since. And that was, that was October the 1st, 2017. And yeah, that was, that was my orange pill moment basically. So yeah. Awesome. It's a good time to get in. It was right before the big, uh, the first all time high. Yeah. I know. I, well, I was, I actually had no idea there was a bull run going on because <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it, it wasn't even like it was, it wasn't even, I wasn't even listening to it on the news or anything, literally just a book, you know, heard a chapter out of a book, bought some mm-hmm. and then started seeing the price going up and I'm looking at it thinking, Jesus, 
I'm going to be a millionaire by next year. <laughs> Just <laughs> offers 50 quid. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's quite funny. And then, and then, of course, it all started coming down after the peak um, in December, two months later. And that was when I really started learning what Bitcoin was after that peak because I was like, okay, I'm not going to be a millionaire, but I need to know what this is. I need to... Yeah, basically build my conviction and that happened in 2018 I built my conviction and then yeah it all just yeah carried on from there bear markets do that mm -hmm. yeah it's a really good lesson for anyone who who got into bitcoin then and who's still holding so let's talk about let's see let's talk about the power of memes before we get into strike um why did all of you start in memes uh, like making memes and kind of what led you to that what led you to that journey, I suppose? So uh, I think uh, I was uh, always a little bit artistic, but not that good. So uh, memeing, I guess, uh, taking stuff from uh, from elsewhere works for me, <laughs> kind of. And I started uh, memeing uh, uh, more hard, more uh, serious, let's say, uh, on Twitter. Uh, we had those... Uh, especially in the bear markets, those degenerate threads we did with friends. Uh, not only Bitcoiners, but also shitcoiners that we basically made each other laugh because it's the bear market. <laughs> 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 so late at night, I would sit in a... I would lie in my bed. Uh, I wouldn't do anything else. I would just... Uh, it was like a, a kind of uh, creative um, meditation for me. Before I go to sleep, like I will take something from here, I will put a face there, and we'll make each other laugh. So it started like that, like silly, silly stuff. We can see today, strike game, it became serious a little bit more. <laughs> I, I try to uh, mean more about Bitcoin, putting out the message there, out there. Where it's, it's a very powerful tool to you if you know how to use it. Like uh, very easily and very quickly, you can uh, transmit uh, the ideas that you stand for and and strike him. <laughs> Craig, how did you get into memes? Pre Bitcoin, I spent a lot of time on Reddit. I was a uh, Fiat Greg, just liked memes. Period. Scroll that thing all day. It's the only thing that really occupied my mind. I like to laugh. Um, and then um, after finding. Uh, the Investors Podcast with Preston Pish, I realized, because uh, he'd mentioned it a few times, there was a thing called Bitcoin Twitter, which I had no idea about. So mm -hmm. I hopped on there and started just kind of poking around and seeing who was saying what. And it seemed like there was a dearth of the kind of memes that I liked. And I figured I could contribute in that way because I'm, I'm, I'm no Robert Breedlove. I'm not writing the number zero in Bitcoin, right? I'm not uh, I'm not Pierre Richard. I don't have the the mathematics degree or the uh, the pedigree in the in the corporate world to go after these uh, these large corporations. I'm not Michael Saylor. I don't have a, a corporate treasury that I can just buy a boatload of Bitcoin with. But man, can I shit post? Um, and they were terrible at first. Not not just the content, but the actual um, the delivery of them. The uh, the finality of the memes. They were all just really bad. I would take pre-made memes and you know really take like a line cross out uh <laughs> the wording on it and replace it in handwriting with what mm -hmm. i wanted the meme to say um and every step along the way that i've improved in my meme and i've only been doing this since june 2020 ish uh, every step along the way all of my progress can be uh, can be looked back at as me being angry at somebody for doing a better job than me in like a, in like a yelling match on Twitter. So uh, initially it was uh, American Hoddle put me in my place with with a meme that just was like, oh man, I don't know how to do that. Now I got to figure that out. Then uh, Guy D. Bennett, Pub Lord, uh, he and I had a a back and forth on Twitter a few times that was fun, but he was so much better at the, at the thing than me. So I figured that I needed to figure out what app he was using and how he was doing it and discovered um, – the Bitcoin Arsenal, which is run by uh, by Swan with uh, with Corey and Brecky, uh, and that was a cool little community. They they um, they trade uh, 
not trade secrets, but like basically how what apps to use and where to find good uh, formats for memes. And uh, it's a good place to like put some of your material and get feedback before you throw it into the crucible of Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, but I mean that that's another thing. So Twitter really is a crucible for for work. So if anybody wants to start memeing, just keep putting your stuff out there. It's gonna suck at first, and you're gonna get instant feedback about how bad it sucks. But every once in a while, you'll, you'll, you'll do something right, and it'll be funny, and you'll get rewarded for it uh, with with likes. <laughs> and um, <laughs> then what happened? RD and I, um, I don't, I can't remember how we found each other, man. But uh, I, I think it was, um, it must have been a public or thread. It was, and yeah. uh, and then you and I would go back and forth with each other. At one point, you did a a video meme mocking me and i just it crushed me i couldn't do i couldn't do video memes so i had to figure out how to do those um and then um when yellow and i were trying to get a jack myler's attention with strike with some of the memes that we were putting out we were both this is how it happened we were both lamenting that the guy never got back to us and he's so busy <laughs> he doesn't care about these two idiots online shit posting each other and uh yeah, you know, he basically responded in the thread like, "Hey, if you guys are really interested in uh, doing this with Strike, create a private DM group. We'll get this rolling." And I don't know if a yellow was as surprised as I was, but I was like, "Oh my god, yes, please, let's let's get this going." And uh, I wasn't that surprised actually, because he already before that uh, I spammed the shit out of uh, Jack's DMs for months, and at smart. some and at <laughs> some point. He did uh, acknowledge and uh, like the me back. Okay, that sounds cool, but like, okay, get, leave me alone now. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then, then uh, yeah, yeah. But like, uh, you when you when when Jack was asking basically like who I was, you're like, well, Artie and I are really good at, at like these high quality memes, and Greg Greg makes funny pictures. And <laughs> I was like, shit, I gotta get better. I, get, I was like, I gotta get better at these now. And uh, so I started using uh, more video editing apps and, and creating memes that way. And that's been a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, every step of my, my meaning journey has been um, basically trying to say uh, F you to somebody else. And I, I have to acknowledge uh, uh, Craig uh, has become so, so good in uh, video editing so quickly. I really can't believe what he's uh, yeah, coming up with these days. Props to Greg. Yeah, he's definitely stepped up his game since uh, since the strike thing started. So yeah, yeah. That's all thanks to you, Balakas. <laughs> we memed you into existence. You did. <laughs> you absolutely did. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Awesome. So, RD, how did you get into making memes and in this whole line of work? Um. Yeah. So. Everyone asks, asks the same thing. So, um, yeah, it, I, I kind of, I used to just do it just because I've always been, like, good with tech generally. So, you know, if there's a new, if there's an app or you need to be able to do something, I've just been out, I've just had a knack for being able to pick it up pretty quickly. Um that's not true for everything else in life, um, but for some reason, things like on phones and computers, which is what I basically do for my for my living outside of uh, being a strike meme lord. Um, I uh, yeah, I just so I would always have like mates just say, "Oh, can you know, you know, make this a meme or drop someone's face in here and." and stuff like that so I was always the guy that was getting asked to do that anyway and just like Greg I looked at a lot of memes online as well not on reddit but generally you know just on all the other social media platforms um and loved memes loved to laugh um so yeah meme culture was was definitely engraved in my brain anyway and then I actually made one meme on twitter my first bitcoin meme um and it, it was just it just burst out of my head one day last year i think it was in april um and i thought I, I i need to put this together it's in my head i need to put it together so i must have sat for like 
I don't know, three, four hours putting it together. Did it. It was a bit sketchy. You know, it wasn't, certainly wasn't the best editing that you could do, but it was, it was the best that I could do at the time. Posted it and it went, it instantly went viral and I couldn't believe it. So I thought that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaks. Yeah. Could I thought, am I, have I just, you know, got lucky have i have i peaked too soon you know it's like all the excitement of that went on for a few days and then i thought well maybe i can do a few more and and it's maybe it's because i spend my every day nearly every waking hour listening to bitcoin content podcasts and and audiobooks and everything maybe that's why i could do it and then i just carried on from there um, started making more and more Bitcoin memes, and uh, that was it. Really, carried on from there. And then when it came to the the strike thing that uh, we're now involved in, and especially the the thread that Greg and Yellow were talking about, uh, it was quite funny for me because you know it's not something that we had like all talked about together, but we just me and Greg were always shit posting around each other at each other and you know for me to be in a thread with Greg was not unusual um so I just started seeing these notifications uh, oh what have I been tagged in now by him and uh I you know I, I didn't know what was going on to start with and then I think the first the first time I looked at it was when Jack had replied to the thread so I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> what is this? Is this for real? <laughs> so, yeah, I was totally confused by the whole thing. Um, next thing I know, we're in a group talking to Jack. The, the next day we're on a Zoom call talking to Jack. who was like, this is, this is for real. <laughs> and this is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that was, uh, that's my story up until there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So what is it like working at Strike? What's Jack like to work with? And you know, how, I guess, what's it like working at Strike? We only have one chair. It sucks. <laughs> we take rotations to sit in the chair. And, uh, but uh, we have a thing that uh, basically me and Craig sit more in the chair because we kind of need it. And uh, we put our D in the corner with the plants. <laughs> Not, seriously uh, it's basically a, a slack room where uh, we pitch ideas we make memes about strike and bitcoin of course and uh, because those guys are extremely busy Jack and the team and Dylan uh, they will pop in and uh, have some feedback uh, or have some, uh, some directions they want to take some memes or something about the uh, like a, a deal coming up or something like that. So it's very casual. It's an amazing. Uh, it's it's an amazing job to have, actually. <laughs> Knock on wood. Uh, yeah, uh, I love I love working for, for those guys. They're they're very they're they're Bitcoiners. They're they're people like us, like me and you and everybody that we talk and uh, every day on Twitter. They're very approachable. Yeah, what's not to love? Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Cool. One of the things that I, I'm really enjoying seeing is the uh, like the office style tweets. <laughs> that I think Greg, you're responsible for putting out mostly about you know Yellow stole my chair, who stole my lunch, <laughs> like all of that. Well, it's not it's not nice when he <laughs> takes the chair, and the, it, it really wasn't nice when he locked me in the office. Um, <laughs> I had to go to therapy, and. <laughs> Since then, because I keep losing all those key cards, you know, I'm costing I'm costing the company a lot of money with with replacement key cards. I, I broke the chair a little bit. I mean, it's not it's not totally broken, but it's a little bit broken. And it, they're, they're, it's going to come out of my paycheck, is what Jack is telling me. Um, and the guys in accounting keep telling me that they want to get me fired, and I don't I don't know why. I don't really I really don't know why they do that. Um, HR has been okay, but, you know, it, 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 it is we're close it is. to a hostile work environment, but it's not there yet. But it, it, they've, they've done a good job making me feel comfortable. 
especially when they come and unlock the door for me in the bathroom when I lock myself in. Um, <laughs> and honestly, technically, none of us have been paid yet, so I'm not entirely sure we're employed there. Um, <laughs> even though they keep taking money from me for the key cards, it's all it's all a dream. <laughs> <laughs> No, you also did a great job explaining what the uh, what the what the daily is at the at the job. It's a slack room. It's it's very casual. Um, we all have a great time uh, making fun of each other and bouncing ideas off of one another and trying to get the attention of the boss from time to time. The the funny thing uh, with uh, the thing Craig started on Twitter is that now people that random people just jump in and they play the part of the accounting department or. <laughs> We now have an intern, supposedly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we have an intern. Bitcoin yeah. is us. It became a meme. And some people aren't quite sure whether we're serious or not. So. No. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, a, that's a funny thing. So let's talk about the laser eyes meme. And this might be a little bit of dangerous territory, but let's talk about the origin of it. And uh, I mean, it's all over Bitcoin Twitter right now. So uh, yeah, how did that done. all get started? It was definitely us, and it had nothing to do with Chair Force. Nope, yes. nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Chair Force is an attention-seeking Bitcoin Twitter was, account, it, and you can't was, believe anything he says, especially it was, if he puts it in crypto cloaks. It was Jack Muller that started it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, you know, sometimes you just have to zoom out and look at the big picture. <laughs> and... Uh, Realize that there's there's more to life than chair force <laughs> and puppy. <laughs> uh, Rd, I think you were actually actually part of the uh, the original back and forth with chair force on that one. Was that you? Or was that was that Pedro? Well, in the group, um, even though there isn't a group, there's no group. <laughs> there's no group. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. No. I I generally respond to as much as I can with those guys, but um, yeah. Chairforce definitely came up with, with the the hashtag and we were all sort of yeah that's that's a great idea like when do we do it 50k yeah so it was all brainstormed there about I'm gonna say it was about two weeks before wasn't it do you remember sounds about right yeah we didn't have to wait long no <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but yeah, the, the idea was as soon as we hit 50k, there's what's that, eight, nine of us, um, we're all going to change nine. our yeah, change our avatars to laser eyes and then drop the um, hashtag laser ray until 100k. Of course, Greggy shot his load first. <laughs> you were all sleeping. <laughs> um, and it was very debatable whether we actually were at 50k but it was close <laughs> enough <laughs> um, so I, I think, think it was a, a Korean side that it was 50k okay North stop Korea making, yeah stop making fun of Craig yeah. <laughs> yeah stop making fun of Craig sorry I'm, I'm really picking on him tonight <laughs> <laughs> this isn't bad compared to the normal <laughs> I'm I'm much better at picking on you via via memes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um so yeah, that was that was the idea. Once we hit fifty K, I think I woke up here, it was about six or seven AM and I'd seen that Greg had already done it. So I was like, I better do it as well. So I did it. Yeah, because we all had the shades on still, didn't we? The Wall, yes, Wall we Street did. Bet shades. Yeah, so it was yep. it was all about taking the shades off. We all took the shades off, laser ray. And then, well, it just went absolutely crazy after that. So that was how it started. But I let one of the others carry on. Yeah, nobody expected it to, to do what it did. Nobody expected Elon Musk and Michael Saylor and Cynthia Lummis and some guy in Denmark running for office. <laughs> <laughs> to end up with laser eyes. So, just for the record, there you mentioned that there are nine people involved. So, um, do we know who those nine people are? Can we say who they are? All right. So, all right. So, who who are the people? It's <laughs> the three of us. Yep. Pedro. Pedro. Sean. At re underscore tweet. Big Sean Harris. Chair Force. Uh, Marcus. Marcus. Plan B. MTC. BTC. 
and yellow. Oh, somebody's going to be mad. Somebody's going to be mad. I'm forgetting about him. No, no, Labrador. 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 If there were a group, uh, who else? those would be the people that might be in the group. <laughs> but there's definitely not a group. There's definitely not a group, and we'll deny any accusations of such group existing. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about your uh, your more famous memes and ones that really gained traction. Uh, what was the thought process behind those? Was there a thought process? And um, yeah, just what's the overall strategy? She's talking yeah. to you two, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any popular memes. So. Any, anything I tag you guys in it usually goes pretty popular. <laughs> 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 RD's got the magic touch. Dude, you could put a banana up on the screen with a piece of duct tape and you would it's get so 2,000 annoying. likes. And... He's it annoying. is. It is annoying. Annoying. And we love you and you're a genius, but we hate you. Yeah. He tags us. He tags us on the fucking. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I have, I have like, a, I think I have like two categories of memes. Like I think uh, I might do a meme that uh, it's so current uh, news. Like uh, I will see something happening in the news about Bitcoin or something silly about happening in shitcoins. That's, that's also fun memes to make. <laughs> and uh, I'll just, uh, something will pop in my mind of a video I had uh, seen uh, in some forum with memes so i save a lot of memes just just in case i use them in the future so i'll go back in my phone and i find that uh or i'll google that uh meme and i'll find it i'll download it and i'll basically make it uh, relative uh yeah to the current news and of course there there's uh the other kind of memes that like I, i've done a couple of uh those kind of memes that are kind of pers personal like uh i made a meme uh, like a 32-bit meme of my character of the yellow thing uh, jumping like a video game that I found in YouTube. And uh, I, I basically made it the whole uh, level, uh, that character going through the whole journey of what, I, what I've been through, like empty gox and all the fat we've been through and all that thing. Or, or, the, thing, or the meme that I have pinned like uh, in my Twitter where it's basically I was uh, kind of fed up with Twitter. That that making slowly that mean made me come back to Twitter and memeing and in, in general and the bongo cut meme, <laughs> I don't know. I have I have a few that I I, I enjoyed making and 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 I enjoyed extremely that uh, they became very uh, popular with people. People liked it as I did. With me, like I I kind of have a few different ways to to meme as well, and I. I like. I really like to do like a serious kind of hard hitting meme, which you know that hits the sweet spot. Um, but also, I like to do like funny, not so serious memes as well. And my most popular meme that went viral, like ridiculously, which I did not expect at all, was one that I did of a guy with a Bitcoin over his head kicking elon musk holding the dogecoin dog up on the edge of the cliff it, like if you remember the lion king meme that he did and that literally just came from me seeing him post that meme and going oh, fuck this guy <laughs> i, mean, I want to kick him straight off that cliff and then so i made it happen <laughs> in a meme and then it just like exploded straight away and Obviously, every everybody else was feeling the same way. Um, that was so fun to do that, and, and for it to for it to go so viral like that. You know, that was really me just making this stupid little meme that uh, I had. Like quite often when I'm making them, I'm thinking I'm not even thinking how whether it will go viral or not. I'm just like I'm literally just making what I'm thinking come alive posted it and it's like yeah that's it it's out there now and then sometimes they just explode that was fun and that was just brilliant for me to express my feelings that way and, and for everyone else to, to to enjoy it and 
be dialed into it. Yeah. And that that's the thing with memes. Like uh you might be making a meme for two weeks and like two hundred people will like it. Yeah. And it's very personal and, and you love making that meme, yeah. but it won't go that far, you know. And then you might do something like in the spot, uh very spontaneous and it, it will everybody will go crazy about it. <laughs> and you will be wondering, well, huh? <laughs> How is this? Yeah, exactly. Yellow, let's talk a little bit about the character Yellow. Um, how did you come up with Yellow? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, the Flatty Kerrick character was uh, a character created by a guy uh, called Mr. Oizo back in the 90s. He's a French uh, musician and playing uh, underground electric, uh, electronic music. He's well known here in uh, Europe. I had, I had a... A toy growing up uh, because my big brother was listening to to rave and electronica and stuff like that. I had I had my my dog's account back in 2013. I was back then uh, in Twitter, but when I made the unknown account in Twitter, I was trying to think uh, a good <laughs> I don't know cartoon or something to put for 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 a navi because everybody was using it stuff like that or something silly and funny. And uh, that's the thing, the, the, the first thing that I saw in my room. He was still there, standing and watching. Me, like. So, yeah, I, I tweaked it a bit. Like, I added the, the crazy eyes and everything. And uh, slowly became uh, what it is. <laughs> awesome. Um, are there more adventures for, for Yellow? Um, I know that you've done some, some, short, uh, some short videos. Um, are there any of those coming uh, coming up in the next few months? Yeah, uh, Yellow is taking a back seat because Popcat is popular, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think we'll see him in a short. Uh, it's not the same because Yellow was always uh, in the memes with uh, Hot or Not, so uh, uh, that sucks a little bit. <laughs> now that he's gone from Twitter, yeah. Coach. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. I, I hate when people get uh, doxxed. You know, they just want well, not yeah, they just want their privacy. And yeah, yeah it's a it's a shame. He'll be uh, he'll be very much missed. Yep. Well, if Yellow doesn't make any more Yellow memes, rest assured, me and RD will make some of him. Nice. Sure. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's kind of how me and Yellow started talking was because. I made um, a have fun staying poor meme out of the pop cat and um, posted it to Yellow. And then that was how we started chatting, wasn't it, Yellow? Because before that, I'd seen your memes. I loved your memes because, like, Yellow is the master. And when I seen him doing the pop cat, I was like, I'm going to make that pop cat say um, have fun staying poor because I was making a lot of uh, those yeah, gifts at the perfect. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from then, and I wasn't quite sure how you'd feel about me doing it. Um, but I thought, no, I, I'm going to do it. And then I'll send it to you first and see see if you liked it or how you reacted and, and you yeah, loved yeah. it. And then, yeah, we, we basically became mates after that. So that was, that was the start of our friendship. <laughs> yep. True. Yeah. For some reason, um, I didn't talk to, to the guys. I knew Wardy, I knew Craig from Twitter, but uh, we never uh, talked in the DMs for some reason. Maybe because, as I said, uh, most of my friends uh, is uh, are shitcoiners. So I was always the Bitcoiner, uh, like uh, the old guy yelling to the kids, stop messing around. <laughs> You're going to get hurt. You know? <laughs> so I was always in the Twitter with uh, Investbro and Loomdart and Crypto Cobain, because I knew those guys back in 2013 when Twitter basically, there wasn't Bitcoin Twitter. They were like kind of all together. We weren't that uh, divided. Or not divided. Uh, I, I don't know the word anyway. Um, yeah, it, back then it was all an ex more, more than an experiment. So it wasn't that uh, like a serious stuff, business, whatever the word is. Yeah, lately, like after... Uh, I think uh, 2020, 2019, I, I started uh, interacting with the guys here more. Um, 
Before we get into, I'd actually like to get into um, to Popcat, but let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin Twitter. What is Bitcoin Twitter? Bitcoin Twitter is the home I didn't know I needed. Oh my goodness. I was so long driving down that rabbit hole by myself reading Mises and Rothbard and When Money Dies and listening to the Investors Podcast. I had no idea. I had no idea. So anybody who's interested in Bitcoin, who is going down this rabbit hole journey, we're all here. We're all happy to talk to you and, and have fun. Yeah, it's like all, all the best economic minds of our time are on Bitcoin Twitter, talking to each other, sharing ideas, sharpening their ideas, pushing stuff out there, pushing the boundaries of what you can do on Twitter. Bitcoin Twitter is awesome. It's awesome. That's that. Those are my thoughts on Bitcoin Twitter. I don't think I need to say anything. <laughs> RD, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yes, yeah, same as Greg, really. Because um, it's the common story with Bitcoin is that, like in meat space, you are quite isolated as a Bitcoiner. Um, everyone thinks you're a bit crazy. No one really wants to listen to you. Um, and then when you can get on Bitcoin Twitter then you're with your crew then you're with people that um you know share the same ideas as you and uh, what a wealth of knowledge as well you know so um i'd say i'd learn possibly half of what i know about bitcoin via bitcoin twitter so yeah it's it's just amazing love it love it and i always have fun and it's like a lot of people i've heard over the last sort of three years complaining about bitcoin twitter and and you know just how much arguing goes on there but i don't think as a memer you get <laughs> too involved in that um i personally don't anyway unless we're arguing with shit coiners and no coiners which is which is understandable but but or yeah, I, or if the price is sideways yeah yeah, and then we're going to argue with each other for sure. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> there's nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what it is to me. Love it. Yeah. Yellow, what is Bitcoin Twitter to you? So it's, um, if uh, you remember that uh, old uh, comic books, uh, French comic books, uh, Asterix and Obelix, it's that village. We're that village and the whole world around us is the Roman Empire of fiat. So basically, we're the crazy ones in our own village doing our thing and uh, being sovereign and uh, don't give a shit about <laughs> anything else happening around us. Yeah, that, that, that's basically it for me. That's a, such a good way of describing it. I love that. <laughs> don't steal that meme. I'm making it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already posted okay. it. You're fine. i got to go now. Yeah, I've just got some memes to do. <laughs> yeah. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> you close the car. <laughs> awesome. So let's, uh, Yellow, let's talk a little bit about PopCat. What's, what's the talk? Like, uh, when I first saw the popcorn in uh, the internet, and uh, it was the perfect fit for a Bitcoin logo there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a perfect analogy for, uh, for the Bitcoiner. Uh, and I love uh, making it, making a montage with popcorn and uh, making mad uh, other people. Like, that's, that's the best memes I can make these days. <laughs> yeah, uh, making those, uh, I always laugh. So, I know when I make a meme and I laugh uh, with what I'm making, it's a, it's a good meme. I think it's a great character. I think the one with Roger Vera was pretty classic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was actually trying to, to figure other like uh, instances. I think Richard Hart has a similar one where he freaks out in mm -hmm. an interview. I have to find more like that because it, it fits perfectly. Like do, do Mark Cuban talking about bananas? You kidding? Me? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And that, and that one, yeah, yeah. Fuck Mark Cuban though. Yeah, fuck Mark Cuban. Who cares? <laughs> Roger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roger. Roger Vell is a classic villain for us, man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mark Cuban is a is a guy playing with NFTs. Not the same. Very true. 
So one of the ways I like to wrap up episodes is to ask if you have any questions for listeners and viewers. And if so, how can they find you? Um, Greg, let's start with you. Questions for the viewers. Why haven't you bought Bitcoin yet? What's wrong with you? You should go buy Bitcoin. Save yourself, save your family, buy some Bitcoin. You can find me on Twitter at, at GregZedge1. Uh, feel free to go throw obscenities at me. It's uh, what a lot of people like to do these days. And uh, hopefully I'll see you there. RD? Um, questions for your uh, listeners. Why haven't you got laser eyes yet? <laughs> exactly. Right? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. How, why are you so bearish? <laughs> Um, I'm on Twitter, um, RDBTC, it's RD underscore BTC, and uh, Instagram as well, but I only, I only really engage with people on, on Twitter, um, Instagram, I use basically as like a catalogue for my memes, so if I post it on Twitter, I post it on Instagram as well, just so much easier to find my old my old memes on Instagram than it is on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's where you find me. Um if you already follow me, thank you, and thanks for sharing and liking my memes, and mainly supporting Bitcoin, really, because that's what it's all about for me. So I like to hide behind my memes and uh, let my memes do my talking. <laughs> well, there is the you know the concept of memeing things into existence, so I think there's a lot of power to memes. Yep. We just repackage what's already real and make it a little more visible. Um, Yellow, for questions for our listeners and viewers, uh, do you have any questions? And uh, if so, how can people find you? So uh, they can find me with uh, at ICO Fender pretty much everywhere. I'm mostly on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, Instagram. And uh, I have one question. What's your favorite color? Selfish <laughs> Good one. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Um, I'm I'm excited to see what happens um, with what you're you're cooking up at Strike. Is there anything that you can talk about as a as a preview for listeners and viewers, or is that something that's got to stay under wraps for the next little while? I think every it Friday we're dropping an epic meme. Yep. Yep. And and as for the future. I- I don't think it'll be long before Greg gets fired. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. No, I, th- I think, uh, in all sim- seriousness, uh, I think big news are coming very soon. So stay tuned. Be ready to download it, whoever has it already. We- we're going to see that monster start his engines. engines. Buckle up. Buckle up, exactly. Well, on that note, um, thanks again for joining me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having everybody but yellow. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to stop recording and then that'll, um, it'll upload. I'm still recording. Have we started yet? Yeah, when do we start? (laughs) When do we start the podcast? (laughs) Is any of this, are you going to ask any of these questions? (laughs) I'm glad you gave us a chance to go through (laughs) <laughs> imagine if we, imagine if she, started now. <laughs> I might ask a question or two. We'll see. <laughs> I actually, I think thankfully I didn't hit stop recording. I'm going to include this in behind the scenes. So. <laughs> Great. Are we done? <laughs> <We're> done. <laughs> I just, I just She's lying. To... Still says record. I, it still says I just, record. I Don't say a freaking swear. word about the meme factory because it's not real. <laughs> Stop talking. I just want to swear that, Craig. You want to swear at me one more time? <laughs> You're getting mean tonight, son. <laughs> that would be a good meme, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. No, I am actually going to hit. Okay. Sure you are. Sure you are. We saw you do it twice now. <laughs> Liar. There we go.